Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco for Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2016 Northeast Astronomy Forum, NEAF. And right now I'm over with the Celestron folks at their booth, and I'm talking with Brian Cogdell, who is the product manager for the high-end astronomy products. I know you've got a lot of stuff on the floor here, but one in particular you want to tell me about, and I want to hear what you've got to say about this. Yes, we're excited about this new product. So we've got the Nexstar Evolution 8 HD, now, there's a lot going on here. I have to roll back to a couple years ago when we first introduced our Nexstar Evolution telescope. This was a complete telescope kit similar to what you see here, uh, but there are some new features. Now, the original Nexstar Evolution that we released a couple of years ago, uh, we had a six, an eight, and a nine and a quarter inch Schmidt Cassegrain mounted on a, on a single fork arm mount that you see here. And what was big about this, and still is, this is still, I mean, this is, this was big at, at NEF and it, and it still is, is we have an internal rechargeable lithium iron phosphate battery. I can explain more about that chemistry later. But we also have built in uh, internal Wi Fi. So you're able to control the telescope with your favorite smart device, your, your, your iPhone, your tablet, uh, with the free app. So the app is Sky Portal. Uh, and it, it's free. We've actually continued to innovate Sky Portal. It has direct telescope control for Nexstar Evolution, as well as our other go-to telescopes when you equip them with Wi-Fi. But back to Nexstar Evo, we call it for short. So it's got the built-in Wi-Fi. It's got the built-in rechargeable battery. It's on a nice single fork arm, and we've, we've added uh, manual release clutches for both axes, for both altitude and for azimuth, which is convenient for setup or just manually positioning the telescope when you need to. Uh, we've added a, a, whole, a, whole, a host of comfort features and, and conveniences. Um, one of them actually being, which is pretty cool, you, you'd see it in a dark sky site. I want to ask you two quick questions. Sure. So the app that's available, it's free. Absolutely free. All right, and it's for what platforms? It's for both iOS and Android. All right, so it works on the phones and the tablets? That's right, yeah. I mean, basically your favorite smart device. Yeah. All right, all right, so continue on. So now, the next star evolution, here we are two years later. This is uh, still very much our most cutting edge mount where it incorporates a lot of our technologies, the internal Wi-Fi, internal battery. We've now added an eight inch model that uses our Edge HD optics. And these are different? They are. Uh, the Edge HD was made uh, with astrophotography specifically in mind. So the optics uh, are optimized to provide a flat field and coma free uh, view for your favorite camera, for a DSLR or CCD camera. Uh, the optics here, you won't see them, I have the visual back on here, so we can use this visually, of course, as you would a Schmidt Cassegrain. But if you also, if you're going to attach a camera, there are sub-aperture correctors here, so you can dive more into astrophotography now using this mount and optical tube combo. And what's more is you can now equip it with the wedge that was made specifically for Nexstar Evolution. And with the wedge, you're now able to take longer exposure astrophotos uh, where you would not encounter field rotation as you would with standard Altazimuth platform. And you can see by looking at this wedge, uh, it was definitely designed uh, for, for the smaller mount. As you, as you probably know, we have a larger HD Pro wedge for our CPC series, but this is much more uh, a proportional fit that works and keeps the whole setup lightweight and, and is still very transportable. So we've got the, we've got the innovative mount, the Edge HD optics, and, and the wedge. We've got a full-blown astrophotography setup. This wedge is optional. You don't need it if you're not going to take long exposure astrophotos. But there's one thing I really want to talk about, uh, which is actually included with the, the Next Revolution 8 HD, and that's our StarSense Auto Align. That's included with this new setup. And StarSense Auto Line, we also released a couple years ago, but you can see um, the theme here is that we're actually starting to marry these technologies together in one solution. So StarSense Auto Line literally does just that. It automatically aligns your telescope with the night sky. It actually has a camera here you can see, and it, and it takes a few pictures of the night sky. It's actually the term, it's called plate solving. It uses these star images, that it recognizes that star pattern as unique to that region of the sky and it self-aligns itself. It doesn't get any easier to align your telescope, it really doesn't. So you literally are t either tapping on your iPad, connect and align, go, or on your hand control, align, 
And from there, the telescope with StarSense takes over and self-aligns in, in a couple of minutes. All right. So this alignment with StarSense, you're talking about initializing the telescope so that it gets its bearings where it is in the sky for the go-to pointing. That's right. Now, the other alignment that you might need is if you're using the wedge and you're setting up for long exposure astrophotography, you need to polar align. Will StarSense help with that? It will. It will help with that as well. Yeah. So it doesn't do it automatically, but it, it gives you the feedback that you need so that you can adjust the mount and get it polar aligned. And you can do it easily. You don't need a view to the North Star. You can use any region of sky and have StarSense help you uh, polar align your mount and you make your, your final physical adjustments to do that. And it's actually a lot faster and more accurate than you would by sighting down to see Polaris uh, to do your polar alignment. That's great. Can you use StarSense with any of the other scopes? You can, yeah. So this, the StarSense uh, will work with any of our current go-to telescopes. All of them. All of them. And it's, and it's really, like I say, being able to do the auto alignment just makes life so much easier. The other thing we've done to StarSense very recently is you can now control it with the Sky Portal app. I talked about it exclusively without the hand control. You can control StarSense wirelessly with your app, uh, with, with Sky Portal. Now, if you're using a Celestron scope that doesn't have Wi-Fi built in, as it does on Evolution, you can add the Sky Portal Wi-Fi module to oh, really? the GoTo, and that also works with all of our GoTo scopes. So you could actually very easily equip, let's say, for example, uh, a CPC or a CGEM mount with a StarSense Auto Align and our Sky Portal Wi-Fi module, and you can automatically align from your tablet or your smartphone. And you're literally, I'm, I'm serious when I say when you tap, you tap connect and align, it begins slewing. It initiates the auto align process and you're done in a couple of minutes. Wow. So it's, it's never been that easy. And now, now you're not limited to the, the, the display on your hand control. You have all the beautiful graphics on, on your smart device. The date, time, and location, that's not even applicable anymore. It's just on your smart device. So it's removing so much of the setup. And, and you're getting immediately to the observing or the astro imaging in a much faster time frame. All right, now you mentioned the built-in battery and the technology that's being used for that. Tell me a little bit more. Okay, this internal rechargeable battery, as I mentioned, it uses lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry, but that is, the battery chemistry has been coming a long way. This, um, this first of all, it will charge your, it will, it will run your telescope for 10 hours on, a, on a, an average usage. Your next star evolution will run 10 hours on this battery in one charge. But the thing is, you can, you can discharge this all the way to zero and recharge it uh, many, many, many times more than you would on a traditional lead acid battery. And it will last years on the shelf, many years. I mean, this battery chemistry is amazing. You can leave it you know, stored for a long period of time. It maintains its charge. And as many of us know, we're bringing some of our traditional lead acid batteries out to the field. They, their charge does not always hold up to what you think they, they should, especially as they age yep. and you have to top them off constantly. All those things no longer become an issue when you're using this new battery technology. And it's such that you don't even need as big of a battery because you're using 100% of its battery's capacity. Right. And, and this is starting to, to find its way into more places in the industry too. We are now using this type of battery technology for our power tanks, and that's one of the new announcements here at, at NEF. Uh, we're, we're launching the, the power tank lithium. Show that to me. Yeah, I've got one here to show you. So this is the power tank lithium. And you'll, you'll notice that it's actually um, you know, quite a bit smaller than our traditional uh, power tanks that use the lead acid battery. It's, yeah. a, it's a very compact form factor. But really the best part about this is the battery chemistry that I was talking about. So this is rated at, uh, it's a solid six amp hours. In fact, we've actually tested it to, to do a little better than that. And six amp hours at, at 12 volts, which is what most all these telescopes, ours and others included, would run. And on um, most of our telescopes, say you're drawing about half an amp of current, you can run your scope for 12 hours on this. And we're, we would like to be modest about it, saying that you run at 10, but really in our testing is shown you can actually run it a solid 12 hours. So it, it's, it's really amazing. Like I say, you can take it down to zero on its charge. You're not harming the battery as you would a lead acid if you just drain it all the way. Right. And you can charge it many times over uh, for years and years. Looks so, like you've got a charge indicator. Yes, that's right. And, and you've got USB charging. Yep, yeah, we have. You can you can char you have USB charging. You can actually use this to to top off any device that would need to be charged on a USB. Of course, your phone included. Yep. Um, the form factor too, uh, not only smaller, but we have. You see the hang strap for this. Yep. You can 
kind of start to imagine how many ways you might mount this to your telescope, uh, including the counterweight shaft. In fact, we have a belt strap for that too. You can mount it to your counterweight shaft. You can hang it from, if, if, if you've got a, a convenient spot in your tripod or an accessory tray. And now imagining this actually, we, we'd love to do this on our CPC. We're gonna be powering this at start parties. Put it on your fork arm on the CPC and guess what, the, the power is going to be going from the power tank to the power port. There's no, no dangling cord, cord. Wrap or even you don't even have to think about it. So you can see how that, that form factor is coming into play. And this will absolutely outperform the traditional lead acid uh, batteries. All right. And keep that in mind when you see the rating. If you see something that's rated at say seven amp hours, uh, that's generally like your best case scenario. And, and the truth is over time that that rating will, will decline. Whereas with the lithium iron phosphate, it's up to that rating 100%, so you can really rely on that. And so we actually, it's a total of, if you're looking at the 12 volts, and we're at about uh, six amp hours, that's the minimum. It actually, if, if you look at the specs, I think we have it at 84 watt hours, which is actually more than that. You can really rely on that figure and use this to power your telescope um, and, cool. and to top off any device you might have on the field. All right. You notice that? I noticed that. So we've got LED illumination. We have both red light uh, and white, but here's the thing. There's your red light. You, have, you can control the brightness. You cannot accidentally blind everyone on the star field by unintentionally going to white light because you have to press and hold the, the light on off switch uh. to, to go to white or to go back to red. So it's a very intentional switch, and that I think is important, obviously, and you don't wanna, you don't wanna be the pariah on the star field, yep. but you still wanna have light. And when it comes time to take down your setup, you can then switch to white light. Um, so it's, it's, really, it's really nice, feature-packed, and it just it gets, it cuts to the chase. You need power, you need portable power, lighting, you have charge ports, and you have so many different ways of mounting this to your telescope. And, and having superior battery chemistry, it, it, it makes the whole thing a lot it's better. It's really nice, very compact as well. All right, well listen, I know there's some other scopes here you want to have me take a look at. That's right. So, all right, and you've got a colleague you want to have introduce them. Yes, I'd like to introduce you to Lance Lucero. Nice Good to, to see meet you, Lance. All right, so what have you got here? We have the Inspire telescope line. Uh, basically, it's going to consist of uh, three telescopes. We have the 70 millimeter, the 80 millimeter, and the 100, which I'll demonstrate for you today. Uh, this is a brand new line. It's uh, designed with the beginner in mind. I mean, literally, we, we designed this thing um, to make this the best out-of-box experience for the, the entry-level consumer. Okay. Uh, we'll start with the basics. Okay, starting with the accessory tray, um, we've designed this so that uh, one of the, the worst parts about setting up a new telescope is having to carry an accessory tray or worse, dropping screws into the grass. So what we've done is created a folding accessory tray. One you piece? You basically carry it out in one piece, open it up, press this down, and turn the tensioning knob. Gee, that's great. No pieces to have to search around for, nothing no to lose? No pieces to lose, nothing to drop, nothing extra to carry. You can basically make this into the, the single easiest portable mount that we have ever produced for the entry level. Wow. Room for a couple of eyepieces here and anything else that you Absolutely. want to have out with you? Uh, the cool thing is if you're running any kind of astronomy app on your phone, we designed this so that it will hold most cell phones without falling over. Uh, it's even uh, kind of textured to prevent it from sliding off. All right. All right, what are some of the other features? Uh, next up, uh, we have uh, this cool little accessory. Uh, it is basically a oh, flashlight wow. built into the <laughs> mount. Now, the cool thing about this is that this flashlight has a diffuser yep. uh, that allows you to put a soft glow on your accessories. So when you're looking at your eyepieces in the dark, you can tell the difference between a 20 and a 20 by simply staring at the under yep. the light. Yep. Exactly. So this thing actually comes out of the mount, thereby allowing you to use it as a spotlight. You can actually shine it around, look for anything that you've dropped on the ground. Illuminate your star charts? Absolutely. All right. All right. So next up we have uh, our improved Star Pointer Pro Finder Scope. Uh, this is uh, a really cool finder that allows you not only to have a red dot, instead, instead of having a red dot, you turn this on and you can take a peek through there and you've got a double reticle bullseye. Oh, that's nice. Uh, so that uh, the one problem we always found with the original star pointer design is that the field of view is pretty narrow. This actually more than triples the actual field of view of sky visible, but also doesn't cover the star or object that you're, that trying, you're to trying to find with the dot. 
uh, which usually has a tendency to be bright and washes out what you're trying to find. Okay. Uh, so again, just another great step up for the entry level, uh, All right. trying to get the best uh, experience for the consumer. All right. And one of the things I notice is that you've got very nice adjustments for both the left, right, and the up, down, so you Absolutely. can really get the finder aligned with what the telescope's looking at. Absolutely correct. That, that's great. And then obviously this, in it's addition. It's a dimmer, dimmer switch. Dimmer switch uh, and it and turns uh, it off. Exactly. All right, that's pretty cool. Okay. Another great feature that we've added to this for the entry level, it's the first time that this has ever been done, is the addition of a small focus micrometer. Uh, this will help you uh, actually reach focus before you even take the scope and point it at your target. If you want infinity focus, you simply dial this until the number 10 appears in the window, you are at infinity focus. If you want the close focus, you simply rack this out until zero is in the window and you're at the close focus. So say for example, you have a spe specific favorite spot that you like to observe terrestrial objects such as a bird The nest. bird feeder, yeah. Exactly. Um, you can dial the focus before you even drop the eyepiece in. Again, just trying to make the user experience that much easier. All right, I'm looking at your lens cap here. There's, there's gotta be something going on. There's a lot up here and you've gotta explain this. What's, what do we got? Well, what we have here is uh, the first time that this has ever been done on any scope, much less an entry-level scope, where we have uh, a lens cap that functions as a fully operational cell phone holder. You can actually use this to adapt your cell phone and take pictures through the eyepiece. All right, let me see, how's it work? First thing you do is remove this dust plug. It's got a great little storage place, that way it stays out of the way. All right. Uh, then you take your phone and locate your phone cover lift the straps, slide your phone in, simply adjust it until you get the camera looking right in. straight in the middle. All right. Uh, now, we'll turn this around. You start by removing the rubber eye cup from your eyepiece. The cool thing is we even developed ah. This handy dandy little place for you to store it so that it doesn't get lost in the grass when you're actually taking your images. Take your eyepiece, insert it face down in here. Make sure it's seated all the way down. Now insert this into your diagonal. Lock it in place. And now you're actually shooting through, through the, telescope. the telescope. Take pictures of the moon, take pictures of birds, whatever you want. Planets even, okay. uh, whatever image scale you want. You right. can, uh, it's work, it, this uh, adapter works with the 10 millimeter and 20 millimeter eyepieces that are supplied with it. Uh, plus some of our assorted smaller barrel Omni eyepieces. So you can actually go with high, high power and actually shoot planets. So the beautiful thing about this lens cap, and a lot of people might think that uh, these straps are a little bit shaky, but let me prove to you my phone's not going anywhere. No. And you'll see that even after that much shaking, the phone is still centered. It's really uh, held so this holds it very, very well. Uh, in addition to the straps, we have this friction material around wow. the outside of it. Uh, this phone will not go anywhere. And the beauty of it is it works with any phone, uh, especially uh, ones that are inside cases. A lot of the adapters that are available on the market today, you've got to remove the cases before your phone adapter works. Yeah. This works with any case. You know what's great about this is there are a number of different adapters that are out there today so people can put cell phones onto eyepieces and shoot through their telescopes. I mean, I've seen them that cost, you know, tens of dollars, maybe a hundred dollars or more. This is part of the telescope, it's your lens cap. Absolutely. That's a great accessory. You are absolutely correct on that. All right, thank you very much, Lance. I appreciate you telling me about your products. My pleasure, thanks for having me. For viewers that want more information, they can go to www.celestron.com. I'm Dennis DiCicco for Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2016 NEEF.